Next on Good Taste. Young chefs making the grade with five-star raves. That's how you make chicken. Then, wine with over-the-top crackeroni and cheese. It's addictive. <laughs> Plus, you'll want to sip this wild watermelon margarita. It's like agua fresca on steroids. An all-new episode of Good Taste starts now. I'm Tangie Patton. Welcome to Good Taste and welcome to Pearl. We're in the heart of the culinary hotspot of San Antonio. Some of the country's best chefs will train here. Their classroom, an innovative gourmet five-star restaurant that just happens to be getting five-star reviews. Carla Gonzalez has big dreams. My long-term goal is to have a bed and breakfast on the beach. Former college baseball player Preston Yancey has big plans for his future too. The best thing I could have ever done is come here and learn from all these amazing teachers. And with a passion for mastering barbecue, Anthony Gospoderic will win you over with his personality. Yeah, I'm, I'm not no Tom Petty or anything, but I know how to play a little a licks or two. These young chefs are giving everything they've got to make it in the foodie world. Some of them come from all different parts of the U.S. Some are international students. Here at Savor at the Culinary Institute of America, students run the restaurant that's getting rave reviews. Well, the food's fantastic, but the atmosphere, um, I just love that we have like the Culinary Institute here. It's a real world master class for students just about to graduate. A lot of people come here and have no clue that this is a teaching restaurant with the CIA. Right. They come in and they, they literally don't know anything until the server actually greets them and tells them, Hi, welcome to the Saver. This is a restaurant from the CIA and uh, we're all students here. You're in the thick of it, right? Yes. Their classroom, a brand new, trendy, casual space with a state-of-the-art open kitchen and full craft bar. The creative dishes these chefs in training serve up at Savor are some of the finest you'll find in the Alamo City. All of the food here is always kind of new and it's um, kind of at the cutting edge. I know that we're gonna get something out of the ordinary. It's out of the ordinary, all right. The veal asobuco is braised for eight hours. They are executing it impeccably. There's the cast iron chicken, drizzled with truffle honey butter, garnished with foie gras and mushrooms. It's so exceptionally presented. And for Francophiles, the perfectly proportioned steak tartare is paired with a delicate quail egg. You know, the fact that they are first time chefs and they can produce the meals that they do here, you can only imagine what they will do in five or 10 years. Before they set out to make a name for themselves, these chefs will master every detail of running a restaurant, from serving, to wine pouring, to flawless food. That's how you make chicken. What would you say is the most challenging part of the experience for the students? The challenge for them, I think, is that most of them have never served in their life. They're cooks. Right. So they only worked in the kitchen. So it's like they got to learn uh, customer service. They have to learn social skills to interact with the guests. Chef Sophia Sada manages Saver and the students who run it. She's the perfect person for the job. She coached soccer for 10 years. Coaching is kind of like the same thing that I do here. I'm very used to having a lot of people in the kitchen. Yeah. So it's always, it's always chaos in a kitchen and I kind of like it. Here, you can choose from a surprisingly affordable three or four course fixed price menu. It's casual with a touch of elegance and you're getting fine dining but at a reasonable price. The food is excellent and you have to really appreciate what the students do here. Talk about pressure. These students learn each step as they go, sometimes with just a few hours to master each station, including how to prepare the dishes. You learn a lot about yourself and, you know, what you're willing to do. And so I think it's the challenges have definitely just helped me grow. I've definitely learned a lot in like leadership. So it's been able to like 
puts you in positions of leadership and take control of what you're learning and what you want to get out of the class. Well, coming as a diner, you're definitely contributing to the culinary oh, cause, definitely. but you're also going to have a fantastic meal. Yes. One of Sabre's standout dishes is the delectable Mussels Provençal. This is a very simple recipe that we have here at the restaurant that I think everyone could be able to do at home. Kick off the flavor with some Spanish chorizo, red onions, tomatoes, and a little local Texas wine. I only cook with wine I drink. If exactly. it's not good enough to drink, it's not good enough to cook with. Exactly. All right, All right so we're going to add a little bit, a little bit more. There we go. I like the way you roll. <laughs> Toss in some garlic, trumpet mushrooms, chorizo broth, mussels, and Castelvetrano olives. Then serve it up with crispy Parmesan fries. It smells amazing. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Those are good. It's all good at savor. Cheers to many, many more graduates. Cheers. <laughs> Great meals. Time to get cooking in your kitchen. We're at Goya's Kitchens with the executive chef, Fernando Desa, and we're making a delicious and super simple, as always, fish dish with halibut, right? There's a steamed halibut, steaming the papillote with a delicious citrus and chipotle sauce that is amazing. Yum. All right, show us we'll what start. we do. So we start with the little parchment paper. We're gonna cut it kind of like a round, yeah. creating kind of like a heart. Then we get the Hollywood. We season with some Goya adobo with pepper. All sides. in one seasoner every yeah. time. We're gonna put the fish on the parchment. Okay. Let it go to chipotle in a can that we have here. We use the pepper itself and we mix it with the adobo sauce. We puree, and that's what we have here. A little bit of lemon juice, little lemon juice, fresh orange juice. Ah. Okay. Some Goya minced garlic. And then we're gonna season this up with a little bit of adobo too. So what you do, you get the mojo, the sauce, seasoning on top of the fish. We wanna fold it. Like what you do in an empanada, right? Put it in the oven on a preheated oven at 425 degrees. We're gonna right. cook it. I cannot wait to try this. That marinade just looks so amazing. Ah, some tenderness in that fish is so good. Citrusy, mm. smoky, spicy. That is really, really good. Good, right? It's fantastic. We've got the recipe online. I love that. I'm going back for more. Aprovecho. <laughs> Coming up, a taste of the tropics in Texas. But next, sips and dips. And a lot of heat. Yeah, it's got a kick for okay. sure. Okay. We're whining and dining in the hill country next. To find out more about San Antonio area restaurants, click on visitsanantonio.com. Cisco, at the heart of food and service. This place has everything we love about Texas. Wide open spaces, rich history, that laid back country feel. It's a great place to raise a family and open a wine bistro. Part bar. Part wine shop, part restaurant. It all adds up to a whole lot of fun at Grape Juice in Kerrville. This charming Hill Country Cafe got its start like so many good ideas. Over a bottle of wine. My girlfriends and I were at Round Top. Antiques weekend, having a great time, and in the middle of Round Top is this tiny little wine shop. And there was a gentleman standing behind me who ran the place, and I heard him talking to these women. That gentleman reminded Carrie of her husband, Patrick, and sparked a brilliant idea. Here we are, uh, 12 years later. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love the wine, and I love just the family atmosphere here. Kerrville's living room? That's what we call it. That's what we call it around here. The mood may be casual, but the food is far out. With dishes like chupacabra, crackeroni, and the veg out. That is really unique and different and good. Of course, it wouldn't be a wine bar without the cheese. These cream cheese creations grape juice is known for are called schmears. This is called our sweet heat. It's that candied jalapenos, a little Ooh. bit of creaminess, a little bit of heat, a little bit of sweet. Yes, and it's that sweet that makes you go back in. And a lot of heat. Yep, it's got a kick for okay. sure. Okay. Wine lovers, listen up. The shelves are stocked with wines from all over the world. 
and unique finds, all hand-picked by Patrick. I learn something new every time I come in. Patrick spent 15 years selling wine to high-end restaurants in Dallas, but this country boy at heart heard the hill country calling his name. Wanted to live out in the country, get away from the riffraff and the hustle and bustle of city life. No rush hour. No rush hour. No, no craziness. No. They started out selling wine from a tiny house in Hunt, Texas, with just a handful of bottles. We want you to feel like um, you can come in in your flip flops and put your feet up on the table, or if you can dress up and, and be nice as well. A few years later, they expanded to downtown Kerrville, where the locals were more than happy to have them. When they moved to Kerrville, my my husband and I started coming every Saturday. It's easy to see why they found such success. Their cozy, casual concept is paired with a laid-back approach to wine. It's just grape juice, right? Exactly. It's all grape juice. If you like this yes. wine, great. If you don't, move on to something else. There are so many things out there. The food here is as good as the grapes. The chupacabra, that, that's, a, that's my favorite. That mysterious chupacabra is a zesty mix of toppings like barbecue pulled pork, coleslaw, and creamy beer cheese on a pile of crispy nachos. From the burgers to the beers, so much of the menu is sourced straight from Texas. Like this cabrito, farm raised in nearby Bernie and served over Chardonnay sauteed vegetables. It's a beautiful steak here, uh, lots of great food. From steak to shrimp to soft-shelled crab, it really is a perfect place for date night, or if you ask the locals, just about any night. It's gotta be half a dozen people I know here, every day. This sriracha quail lights up one of their crave-worthy dishes, Crackeroni and cheese. And how did it get its name, James? I believe it's kind of a play on the fact that it's so good. It's, it's addictive. addictive. <laughs> and you can see why. We take our saranchi, which is sriracha, with our house-made ranch, and just kind of give it could a- Could it get any better? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if it could. You take a little queso Honestly. fresca, put that on top of there like that, and then we finish it off with a garnish of parsley. Ching, ready? ching, I'm ching, ready. Ching. Yum. Mm. Excellent. It's a must try, and everyone who gives it a try comes back. And I know I'll be back because this is Texas Hill Country at its best. Cheers. Cheers. Coming up, an award winning bargain Chardonnay in my wine finds. But next, a patio like no other that boasts a tropical salad that's big on bacon. Good Taste will be right back. We'd love to share Good Taste. Head to our website at goodtaste.tv where you'll find delicious recipes from top chefs, my latest wine finds, and restaurant recommendations. Plus, you can see all of our episodes right here. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter while you're there. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by HEB. Olé and Bienvenidos to Baytown, where Tex-Mex, tacos, and tequila have been on the scene for 60 years at El Toro Mexican Restaurant. That is phenomenal. Great atmosphere, great service, uh, pleasant place to be. This family-owned cantina is casual and kid-friendly with a large, lush, tropical patio. Honestly, here in Baytown, this is the best patio that they have. You'll want to try their flamed grilled fajitas, fresh salsas, and fluffy flour tortillas. We don't want to be your average Tex-Mex. We bring the, the, the Tex to the Mex, you know? I love that. Uh, yeah. With food this fresh, El Toro has gained a fierce following of regulars. We come to El Toro as often as we can. We're here at least twice a week. Back in 1960, longtime restaurant employee Eugene Ibarra took a leap of faith and set out to open his own restaurant, intrigued by a matador on a sign he saw. It was called El Toro, and he liked the name and he liked the sign. He bought the location, it's still open to this day, oh, wow. and changed all the other ones down here to El Toro. And the bull lives on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. His menu, 
packed with tried and true family recipes was a hit. It's very consistent. Every time we come, the quality is always good. But there's so much more to El Toro than great food and good fun. Faith is also a part of the story. Well, you actually have an minister at the restaurant. That's correct. Not only am I the VP of operations, but I'm also the pastor for El Toro. I'm here for counseling or prayer or if they need something with their families and individuals. I'm here to assist them any way I possibly can. Eugene, a devout father of eight, spent his life giving back to others and spreading the good word any chance he got. And if you came in to visit him, he would hand you a Bible. I think it's special. Yeah. I think it's really cool. Absolutely. A lot's changed since the 1960s. But one thing remains the same, the ever-enduring enchilada. On the menu since day one. Corn tortillas rolled, stuffed, and smothered in chili gravy. Ranchero salsa and sour cream sauce. I like enchiladas. A truly timeless Tex-Mex classic. Everything at El Toro starts from scratch. From salsas to tortillas, they even make their own chips. For the Mex in Tex-Mex, try these Mexico City street tacos. A medley of flame-grilled meats like chicken, chorizo, and al pastor. I love the carnitas. It's got a great garlic butter sauce on it. My wife loves the stuffed avocados. Can't go wrong with those two options. Looking to go light? This salad is summer on a plate. The grilled shrimp are tossed in margarita dressing, a recipe cooked up by executive chef Rico Cabande. Chef Rico, I didn't roll the R's right. Rico. Rico. Got it. There you go. Another bright and beautiful option is Chef Rico's Cabo salad with crisp cabbage, calamata olives, and avocados. I'm going to show you how to fan the avocado mm -hmm. in a way that we can do a, a really nice presentation okay. in our plate. We can just take our avocado, open it a little bit, and give a little bit of texture to the salad. Another right? chefy tip. Another chefy tip, exactly. It's topped with hard-boiled eggs and bacon. I'm for bacon on any salad, <laughs> frankly. I'm from bacon in anything. <laughs> yeah. Then drizzled with Chef Rico's tangy homemade margarita dressing. So here we have Herbs de Provence. Oh, lovely. Now, for the margarita vinaigrette, also we're gonna add, of course, lime. Nice. All right, all right. Blend it together, almost like a real Enjoy. margarita. Oh, wow. That is good, yeah. It's only missing one thing, tequila. I've tried lots of their margaritas. Yes, they're very good. These festive frozen cocktails are a Tex-Mex must. And I'm wild about this watermelon margarita. Oh, wow. It's like agua fresca on steroids. Oh, that's awesome, I love that. Drink with caution. <laughs> <laughs> with all this, there's no wonder why El Toro has survived the test of time. Cheers to another 60 years. Salute. Cheers. Time now for my wine finds, and I want to start with an award-winning Chardonnay. This is the Triana Central Coast Chardonnay. This is classic California Chardonnay without being over the top. Not too oaky, not too buttery. Think creme brulee with delightful citrus notes like mandarin oranges, a hint of lemon, even pineapple. It has a wonderful crisp finish. The Triana Central Coast Chard is $15.99 a bottle. Up next, red fans, think outside the box. This is a Cabernet Franc, and it's called easy enough the Franc from Lodi. It's produced by Cosentino Winery. Cabernet Francs are most often used in red blends, like the classic Bordeaux style reds, but they're becoming popular as a single variety. This wine is a deep crimson color and bursts with flavors of dark berries and plums. The finish has a touch of spice, a bit of black pepper, the Franc is a full-bodied red that begs for a steak. It'll pair perfectly with all kinds of meats, anything you cook on the grill. It's priced at $14.98 a bottle. Up next, 
More for Red fans, a traditional and loved wine from Italy's Piedmont region, the Rouvre Barbera de Alba by Marchesi di Barolo. This wine has fruity notes of dark cherries and blackberries with a hint of spiciness and vanilla. Its bright acidity makes it a perfect food pairing wine. It can handle rich sauces and meats, big risottos, and it's a perfect pizza wine. The Rouvre Barbera is $18.98 a bottle. As always, I found all my wines right here at HEB. A spa getaway could be just a click away. Stay tuned to find out how you could win a relaxing weekend at the beautiful Houstonian Hotel. Sign up for our newsletter right now at goodtaste.tv for a chance to win dinner for two at Tribute Restaurant at the Houstonian Hotel. We'll throw in a two-night stay and two rejuvenating spa treatments at Trellis Spa. Love our show? Let us know. Send us a note on Facebook at Good Taste with Tangie. On Twitter, you can follow me at Tangie Patton. And on Instagram, you'll find us at Good Taste TV. Also, go to our website to get this week's wonderful recipes. Even better yet, sign up for our newsletter at goodtaste.tv. That's all our time for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Cheers. But, hey, on a good Friday, Saturday night when everybody's together, oh man, well, we have a little band together, Joel on the guitar, you know, people just playing the pots and pans. Everyone's having a good time. It just makes it so much better. Yeah.